How are you doing YouTube? Today we're back with a brand new video. So um, today's video we're going to do, a, we're going to block up a, a fireplace. Um, you can see here we, we, we cover in front of the fireplace basically. Um, the, the client had actually said that all the floors were coming up anyway so there was no need to cover anything up but um, I just covered up sort of directly around the area where it be working um, just so that I didn't have to scrape the floors just to make it look um, okay you can see here there's like bonding on the wall and I, ch I just chip all this bonding off um, I try to get these they're like uh, they're like metal metal brackets that were holding an old fire on um, I try to get these off but I end up loosening the plaster on the, the left hand side so we end up taking it all off um, I do this a little bit differently than I would usually do it um, usually what I would do would be it's usually just the hole that you're, you're boarding up but because there was so much of the plaster missing here um, we had to go about it a different way so you're gonna you're gonna see that now. Um, I've knocked the camera here and it's sitting sort of a little bit too high, but that actually does. Um, I f I read it in a minute, so it looks better. Um, so what we're we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the inside here, and then we're gonna we're gonna cut a bit of timber. We're going to cut it just about the right size. Um, just slightly too big. Um. You can see here I'm measuring for the, the plaster board. Um, I actually bought the wrong shade. I bought a, a one of the smaller sheets of plaster board. Um, so I end up having that I cut it into a few different bits. Usually I would just do it all one bit of plaster board, but unfortunately I, I, um, I bought the plaster board was too small. So this is our circular saw we we always carry sort of two or three bits of wood here in the van underneath the planks um just for stuff like this you know uh we'll we'll cut it till the size that we measured and then we'll bring it in and we will put it uh we'll bring it in and we'll we'll set it in you'll see here when we go in it'll be slightly offset from center um the reason we've done this is because there is a there's a socket for um, one of those little fake electric fire type things. You can see the wire there for it, and that needs to be sent in the center of the fireplace. So we set our button just slightly off center. We're going to get um, our SDS then from the fan, and um, we're going to get some. Um, I think they're called. Easy lock concrete screws. Um, you've probably used them before. If not, um, they're, they're sort of the best thing for fixing in the masonry um, or concrete. You just get your your drill bit. Um, you drill through the wood until the concrete, and then you just use an impact driver to drive the sc the screw straight until the concrete. Um, it self taps, so the the but the drill bit that you use is just slightly too small and then when you put the screw in it sort of cuts itself its own thread um, so you can see it's I'm going to get the right spot for it um, and I'm going to drill in I'm going to get one of these and I'm just going to you'll see you just screw it in and that's it um, I, fi I fix it from the, the bottom and then I move up and fix it in an angle into the top um, making sure that it's flush with the the edge of the um, concrete head there and then we just bang another one of those concrete screws in and because it's self topping we don't have to worry about putting wall plugs or any of that messing in you can see here we just drive it straight in um, the reason we've done this with this bit of wood is because we um we want something to screw to because it so it it probably wouldn't have made much of a difference but um 
if sort of maybe someone had leaned against it and there was a bit of movement in the, the plasterboard because there was nothing holding it in the middle. Um, as I was saying to you, the, I've slightly offset the bit of wood and the reason for that is there's a electric fire has to go in and I have uh, one of the plasterboard boxes here that I'm, you'll see here in a minute I'll cut I'll cut it out of the plasterboard so here's one of the wee uh, plasterboard boxes so I just hold it on and cut it roughly um, I don't have to worry about this being straight or level because it's it's going behind an electric fire so it's never going to be seen um, so we cut the shape of the box out um, we just push it in we put the little clips that um, hold it tight till the back of the plasterboard and then we all just um, well, what I'm doing here is I'm going out to get um, my hammer fixings to fix the, the plasterboard to the wall but you'll see now I'll pull the cable through and then that's that's that part sorted um, I'll drill here but this this drill bit is actually too small I forgot to change them so you'll see I'll try to hammer this um, fixing in and it won't go so I'll go out to the fan and I'll get the, the bigger bit um, I always forget that uh, that that bit that I use for the the concrete screws is just a wee bit too small for these hammer fixings. So what we'll do then is when we're like we're putting plasterboard to any wall, we we'll use the the hammer fixings. Um, we don't have to go overboard. Um, sort of the four corners, um, and then at the top of the board we'll put one in the middle as well. And then where that we've put that batten in, we will put three or four screws in there to hold it tight in the middle. And that's just to make sure that there's no flex in the plasterboard at all. Um, we were actually only meant to patch this in. We weren't, we weren't actually meant to do anything except for patch this. Um, but I sort of always prefer to leave you know, as good a job as possible. So I end up skimming this whole chimney breast. Um, it doesn't take me much more time. You know, I would be standing waiting for this skim to set anyway. So I might as well just add an extra, you know, four or five pound until the price of the the job um, for the beads and then just skim the whole wall. There's a lot of boys that will um, they'll not bother doing stuff like that. But... I just think it gives your your company sort of a better a better look that you sort of go over and aboard or over and above for uh, customers you know obviously don't be doing loads and loads of extras for free you know like if the client had to ask me to come and sort of skim the whole thing they would have got the same price as I give them for just sort of patching this bit in you know I'm here for the day I'm not going to be able to go and do anything after so you're going to get a, a day's get charged a day's pay basically um but yeah so I'd rather just do it nice and neat and tidy <coughs> and you see here we're just using uh, our tape measure and our knife and we're cutting this board um i find it easier to cut board like that with using sort of the tape um as like a you should have used the tape as like a ma the measure and mark at the same time i always find it easier easier to cut board that way then i do have one of the sort of t-bars that you use for cutting plasterboard but i would only use that if i'm sort of plasterboarding lots of stuff in a house you know um, we'll cut this little bit flush and then we're going to put our next bit of board this little little bit that's left over um, we'll just cut it and we'll get it fixed on another reason that I would prefer just this skim the whole thing is because 
I like to make sure that it doesn't crack um, and the best way to do that is to actually scrim tape sort of the edges um, and it's and it's hard to just patch in especially with a job like this because the, the, the plaster was so brittle I wouldn't have been able to cut just a, li a little bit of the plaster off to fit the, the tape in um, so I, ha I have to overlap the tape you see here I'm putting the screws into that bit of timber we put in um, so I have to overlap the tape and if I wasn't re-skimming this whole wall it would have been a nightmare it would have been like a big lump um, I also actually staple my tape on um, I just I, f I find it better for stuff like this you know just bibs and braces just make sure that it's nothing's going to move sort of thing um, and, b and basically I'll I don't think you actually see me doing it but I will set the beads on um, both the corners and then that's us that's us ready for for skimming that's it all scrim taped up. We're just going to empty all this mess out until the little bit on the floor there, and we pick that up, um, and we put we put it in a bag, and then uh, we put our dust sheet back down. But you're you're not going to see that. It's gonna um, yeah, it's gonna jump till me getting the buckets out of the van. I think I'm just um. So we're going to get the buckets out. Um, I estimated we probably would have needed a bucket, one of these yellow buckets of water. Um, so basically what I have with me is my two yellow buckets. I have two black buckets. Then four buckets are clean. And then I have a dirty black bucket, a dirty yellow bucket. And then I have my uh, big white bucket, which I clean my drill out with. And then my big black bucket, which... I mix in. So these are my two yellow buckets. These are always kept clean no matter what. Um, because we use them just for water to make sure that it's nice and clean. Um, so you see I put one bucket of water into um, the black bucket. And then I put the other uh, the other yellow bucket of water into the, the white bucket. I'm going to put uh, four handfuls of cement in here. Um, and then a bag of skim. So one of these yellow buckets usually mixes a bag of skim for me. It makes it just a little bit, um, a little bit too uh, loose, which is or a little bit too tight. Sorry, because it, and that's exactly what I want for a job like this, where we're filling out that big gap where the plasterboard is. Um, I like to keep my drill as clean as I can. The especially the paddle so you'll always see me after every mix it goes straight until this white bucket and um it's thoroughly clean so i i use the drill to make sort of like a a wave in the bucket and then i use the brush just to clean the bits that the the spin on water doesn't doesn't clean um i also had a, a comment about um my tools being so dirty look i work I work for uh, five days a week, all year round. I don't have a chance to clean my tools. I'm not one of these plasters that sort of don't work for two weeks and be like, yeah, I'm gonna clean all my tools now. Um, unfortunately, that's that's not me. So we're gonna just um, PVA. We're we're still using the same crappy PVA, uh, but I did mine because there was a lot of suction on this wall, so. I knew it was going to be okay. Um, we just put a real thin light coat on, and it sort of had one tacky. By the time we'd get back in with our our bucket and stuff, um, the reason I mixed the stuff first is because I wanted to start taking up, um, just sort of the 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 like the thicker the stuff is, the better um, for filling out this big gap where the plasterboard is. The plasterboard's about about a half an inch um, 
the plaster sitting about a half an inch proud of the plasterboard so we have to fill that space in um and it was actually tight we were we were scraping the the bottom of the the bucket here um to get enough stuff to first and second coat this out of one bucket so um that was fun sweating the whole time thinking i wasn't going to have enough i just want to take this opportunity um to let you know that in the description there's um some links if you want to support me there's uh the buy me coffee um there's the patreon but most important of all there's amazon affiliate affiliate links um basically what the affiliate links are is you click on the link um the link will bring you to a tool that i use day to day you buy that tool um and i get a percentage um it doesn't cost you anymore um and it's a good way to support me without actually physically giving me any of your money if you don't buy that tool but you go on to buy something else after clicking that link um i'll still get a percentage of whatever it is that you buy so if you just need to buy some things from amazon go ahead and click one of them links and then just go and buy something there and you'll be support me and it's basically free of charge if you were going to buy that thing anyway yeah so um we we put our, our first coat on here and you can see you can see where we're putting it on it's going to be sort of really ripply and bumpy um around that plasterboard and it's just because the plaster is so thick um if you're going to be doing this yourself you need to make sure to take your time and flatten this plaster out as you go um you'll only see me trial this wall up twice i lost the footage of the final trial um but in between the my three trials i trial this uh the bit where the plasterboard is probably another three or four times um because i'm just wanting to get it as flat and straight as possible um and two or three trials isn't going to do it the bit above you can see it's it, it actually dries out a lot quicker because the suction was so bad um and it's basically finished by its second trial um you could probably get away with not trying it up but the bottom um was sort of still in bad shape after its second trial um so you need to pay extra attention realistically what you should have done would be bond that gap you know um the, that space where the plasterboard meets the um the old plaster that should have should have realistically been bonded um but you know we, we don't have time for it you know if i was the bond that this turns into an all-day job and it's it's not really what i want to do um the other thing that you could have do was um do your first coat um let it take up give it a good trial and then go on with your second coat and and take that heaviness out in two coats but because i've been doing it so long i i, I do these fireplaces all the time um and i like to be in and out with them i don't i don't like waiting about um so you'll see here that actually when i'm putting my second coat on here i'm going to really take my time and get it as flat and as straight as i possibly can you can still see sort of the lines of where the old plaster uh meets the board you don't actually see them when it's finished um but when the plaster's this this thick it's it's super hard to get to get right um i would say this would probably be for most spreads would be a big no-no but look I, i've been doing it that long i've never I've never had a, a comeback on it so you know i'm not going to change now but I'm, sh I'm sure there's probably there's probably boys watching i'm actually i'm sure that there's boys watching that will comment rough as fuck or whatever you know but so you can see here this is only my um i'm only actually closing this plaster in here and you can see the top of it has went so far already um like it's almost it's actually ready to cut here you can see me 
slightly wet in the surface, which you you know if it was um, you shouldn't really be doing that at this stage. Um, and you'll see here now, I'm going to actually spend a bit of extra time trying to get this um, as straight as possible. Um, I'm going to try it both ways, and you can see me standing off to the side and ch and checking down the angle. Um, to make sure that it looks straight side on sort of thing um, as I say like you don't see me in between trials but I actually do trial this quite a few times just the bottom because the top was basically finished after this next um, trial so th this this is my cutting trial um, so you can see here it's took up a lot more and I've trialed the bottom of this once more in between. So now I'm just going to go and I'm going to wet the surface. I'm going to agitate it and I'm, um, I'm going to uh, try to get as many of the lumps and bumps out of it as you can. As I can. You can see here it's already starting to look a lot flatter. And I keep looking side on to make sure um, that it looks okay. Um, after this trial, I trial it actually another three times and all but um the I've lost the footage so I'm not sure what happened. The the footage was there but when I transferred it to the phone um it it wouldn't work. I could play it on the camera on the GoPro but I couldn't play it on my phone and I'm not really sure what what it was um that done that. I'm new, I'm new to GoPro, so I'm still sort of working out all the kinks with. Um, you can see there, I'd actually started at the bottom, um, and then I wanted it and, and trialed the top down. And the reason I've done that is because I want to give the bottom another trial. So I've done the bottom, I went up, done the top, and then came down and done the bottom again. Um, and that's just to get as many trials over it as possible. Um, but that that's going to be it for this video, guys. As I say, I've lost the footage of the 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 final few trials. Um, sorry about that. But the next video is going to be a full one from beginning to finish, or from yeah, beginning to finish. Um, I've another one of these in um a few weeks, and then the next the next videos uh the next videos skimming a uh, wall and a bit of patching. So I hope you've enjoyed. Uh Bash the thumbs up button and um, subscribe. There's only 85% uh, of the people that watch the videos aren't subscribed, so subscribe. Um, check out the social media, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we're on TikTok. Check out my description for all my Amazon affiliate links. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.